प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह कृष्ण महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे ठाकुर जी महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सद्गुरु देव की जे Our beloved and divine, the Thakurji Maharaj, who has been served by Sadguru Shri Muktanand Swami, and now is being served by Puja Guruji, Walla Walla Thakurji Maharaj, our divine Guru Parampara, Sadguru Muktanand Swami, Adharan Swami, Hari Priya Swami, Vaikun Charan Swami, Narayan Sarup Swami, Nandaki Shuru Swami, and our Puja Guruji, we bow down to them. The path maker to our liberation, whose pragat manifest our divine Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you, Loyadam Parivar Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. As we continue to embark in our journey for Yuva Sabha, we are currently now going to focus on week six, which is based off, as you can see, Divya Bhav. This word is very, very famous in our Sampradaya, our Satsang, Divya Bhav. But this one word has so much, you can say, weight or emphasis to it, that by this one word, one can become very, very Mahan or great in this Satsang fellowship. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has also emphasized it in the Vachanamrut many, many times. So, first of all, we want to look at it from his perspective, then non sinful perspective, so we can exactly see and exactly get the tools we need to develop this Divya Bhav inside of our souls. So, without further ado, let's first take a look at what Divya Bhav is. What is Divya Bhav? To perceive with glory. Now, <clears throat> I want to give you an example first so you understand each point. Perceive with glory. When we look at a one million dollar check and the pay to the order of is for our name. A piece of paper which is approximately eight inches long and three inches in height, we develop immense amount of glory because the pay to the order of is our name, number one, and number two, the figure is not ten dollars or fifteen dollars, but it is one million dollars. Due to this, we perceive the paycheck, which is a piece of paper again, as I said, eight inches by three inches, with great glory. If we can say we have Divya Bhav in a piece of paper. Moving on. Seeing something special from what looks normal. When we look at another person, we do not know who he or she is, but when time goes on and one, uh, one develops a relationship with that person and decides to get married, that person who seemed normal in the beginning starts to seem very special in a couple of years as that relationship develops. And then it becomes completely special when one becomes married. That very person that maybe you've known for many years, 
was very, very normal to you in your eyes, but something clicked in one's mind and due to that, a special feeling was developed for that person. Number three, to see God, the Ekantik Satpurush, and devotees not from one's own eyes, but from the point of, point of view of scriptures. Now, when we come into satsang, we encounter these three entities, God, the Ekantik Satpurush, and devotees. And in the beginning, we do not see or perceive or understand who they are, how they are, exactly how great they are. But as we perform Sansamagam and as we read the scriptures like the Vachnamrut, Sadguru Gunati Taman Swami Vato, Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami Vato, we start to develop a Mahima and glory for God, Yekandik Satpurush and devotees. Seeing this, we develop a different feeling from the feeling we had initially when we entered into satsang. That is Divya Bhav. Just as we have Divya Bhav for a check, which is just a piece of paper, just as we have Divya Bhav for a person who we, we known for years but seem normal, but then when we decided to develop or have more feelings and then eventually get married, we developed a more, you can say, uh, special feeling for that person. And number three, all that winds into this very point. That kind of divya bhav for a piece of paper and a person. Similarly, when we develop such kind of a divya bhav for Bhagwan, is a kantik satpurush and sant, then that is the essence of this emotion that we are trying to develop, divya bhav our subject for today. Adjust your focus and keep a clear view. Now, as you can see in this picture, the lens, when you look inside, it seems very clear cut, but outside it's very blurry. The outside part is, you can say, not Divya Bhav, perceiving human traits, in Bhagwan is Ekantik Satpur Shansant, and the inside part is Divya Bhav, which is having a very, very keen, special uh, feeling with Mahima glory. That is Divya Bhav. Now, I want to go to the next slide exactly, and this is what merges into that image from before. Now, as you can see the difference, left side, there's a dot, and there is an image of nature, and it's blurry. On the right side, same perspective, a dot, and the image is very clear. Now, seeing things from a perspective of, from our eyes, where we do not know exactly who or how Bhagwan is Ekantik Satpuj and Santo are, is the left side. And seeing the Ekantik Satpuruj, Bhagwan, and devotees from a perspective with Divya Bhav is, num is on the right side, which is a very clear perspective. What we want to do as devotees of Loyadam Parivar is to develop more Divya Bhav in everyone. Not only Bhagwan, but is Ekandik Satpurush, Santo, and Bhaktos. Because without this very element, one cannot remain or even become happy while staying in satsang. And Divya Bhav is something which is so special and secret, yet it's open, that those who develop this Bhav, not only you can say witness, but experience in satsang something different than the others. This perspective is so needed that without this perspective, it is very, very likely that one develops a bow and a gun, or you can say negative thoughts of others in satsang. So when this bow comes of Divya bow, then automatically one remains happy and also one can see 
the divinity which remains in Bhagwan, his Ekantik Satpur, and Santo. So let's take a look at the outline for today and see exactly what we're going to be covering. So as you have a Sabha outline, we want to go with the first point, which is Vachnamrut Panchara no fourth. Second, Vachnamrut Gadrada, first chapter 71. Third, Vachnamrut Loya, fourth. Fourth, Vachnamrut Gadrada, first chapter 24. Fifth, Vachnamrut Gadrada, first chapter 58. And then sixth, Kalyan Kanika, or Puja Guruji's Vato, Kanika 5, Vat number 322, and then two Charitras. So saying that, these are many points of Vachnamruts, but there is no better perspective than Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective. Because Bhagwan Swaminarayan has introduced this Divya Bhav in our satsang. Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants to develop, wants us to develop this Bhav so we can remain and stay happy in our satsang. So what better reference than to use Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words and to understand from his words. So without further ado, let's dive into Panchara 4th chapter and read Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words and understand them as much as we can. So this is a shortened version as you can see, but I would like to read out the whole, you can say, extracted paragraph. And we would like to see what Divya Bhava is and why is it difficult to maintain. Swami Narayan Hare, what Panchara fourth. <clears throat> when that God assumes the form of a human being, he behaves exactly like a human. So when Bhagwan Swami Narayan comes on this earth, he also develops a, 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 he takes a human being form and he is exactly like a human. He wants to merge exactly into everyone. He doesn't want to stand out. This is one of the ways that Bhagwan uh, is when he comes on this earth. During Satyu, the lifespan of humans is 100,000 years. And this God also lives for 100,000 years. Moreover, just as people in Satyu can indulge in an object their mind desires, God also indulges in objects in the same manner. But he does not behave in an extraordinary way, very self-explanatory. Also as the lifespan of humans in Treta Yuga, which is the next Yuga, is 10,000 years, when God is born in Treta, he also lives for that many years. The lifespan in Dwapar Yuga is 1,000 years and human possesses the strength of 10,000 elephants. Thus, God also possesses the same strength and has the same lifespan. When God is born in Kali Yuga, which is current right now, he assumes the lifespan and strength of humans according to the norms of the Kali Yuga. Moreover, just as a child is conceived, then develops in the womb, then is born, then undergoes the phases of childhood, youth, and old age, and eventually dies, God also undergoes the same process exactly like a human. Now, there is four Yugas, or you can say ages. One is Satyug. Second is Treta Yug, third is Dwapar Yug, and fourth, which is current, is Kali Yug. Sat Yug is the best of the Yugs, meaning it has the most, you can say, pious activities, thoughts, environment, as much as possible. As the Yugs go on, Treta Yug is a little lower than that, which a little mixture of Rajagun and Tamagun. After that, Dwapar is even a little more, and Kali Yuga is full of Rajagun and Tamagun. So, saying so, in this paragraph, Bhagavan Swaminam is explaining that as he comes down, he behaves exactly as the ages are. If a person lives for 100,000 years in Satyuk, Bhagwan also lives for 100,000 years in Satyuk. In the same way, Treta and even in Dwapar, men have strength as much as 10,000 elephants. God also possesses that kind of strength. And in Kali Yuga, just as how a baby is conceived and is in the womb and is born as childhood phases goes, in the same way, 
as we have witnessed through Charitras, Maharaj was born in Chapaya, took his childhood in, as Gansha Maharaj, then went on a journey as Nilkanvarni Maharaj, and then went and became, uh, you can say, the head of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya as Sajanan Swami Maharaj. So those kind of phases are something which are very, very, you can say, norm in this age. And Bhagwan also does the same exact thing. He doesn't break the norms of the world. He doesn't break the norms of the cycles. As we mentioned, Satyuk, Tritayuk, Dwaparyuk, and Kaliyuk. Moving on. <clears throat> Further, just as humans possess swabhavs, such as lust, anger, avarice, cravings for taste, egotism, affection, arrogance, matsar, jealousy, attachment, infatuation, happiness, misery, fear, fearlessness, bravery, cowardice, hunger, thirst, desires, craving, sleep, prejudice, a feeling that this belongs to others, a feeling that this belongs to me, renunciation, detachment, etc., in the same way, all of those sabaos are apparent in God as well when He assumes a human form. This is the difficult part. Now, <clears throat> suppose there is an anthill and there are a million ants living in the anthill. And there is one which is, you can say, the head ant of everyone, all of those million ants. One would be, even if one took a thousand years, one will not be able to tell out of the million ants which one is the head ant and which one are just all the followers. Which one is the queen bee and which one is the other millions of bees which are just workers, you can say. In the same way, when Bhagwan Swaminarayan comes on this earth, arrives, God comes on this earth, out of the current 8 billion people, we cannot tell that this is God and everyone else are just human, normal humans. Because Bhagwan also completely comes in disguise and behaves completely with all these sobhavs that Bhagwan mentioned, lust, anger, greed, so on, so on and so forth. He accepts these natures. Bhagwan does not have anything. Bhagwan's form is flawless was flawless and will always be flawless. The Ekantik Satpurusha's form is flawless, was flawless, and will always be flawless. But, not to break the norms or the rules and regulations of this earth, Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurusha also develop such kind of feelings so that they also blend in. That's why it's very difficult to develop Divya Bhav in Bhagwan when he comes on this earth. All of the scriptures have also described the human form of God along with his original divine form. One who has developed a firm conviction of both of those forms through intense Shravan and Manan never harbors doubts in any way, whereas one who lacks this type of understanding does harbor doubts in God. So after developing a conviction from the scriptures of the human form of God and the original divine form of God, which is an Akshar Dham, to being the same, the form that is an Akshar Dham and the form that we have received in the form of Thakurji Maharaj, they are the same. They are not different. Developing that kind of bhao that emotion, that understanding through the scriptures and by the sung, the association of an Ekantik Satpurush through intense Shravan and Manan. Shravan is listening to Katha and Manan is thinking about that Katha. One will never harbor desires, will never have doubts regarding the understanding of the form of God. When that God who possesses a divine form assumes a human form, he behaves with sabhaos similar to humans. However, one who is intelligent re re realizes 
He possesses lust, but it is not like that of other humans. In fact, anger, avarice, cravings for taste, egotism, and other human sobaos are also present in God. But they certainly are not like those possessed by humans, other humans. An intelligent person realizes that there is something divine about that God. And with this understanding, he develops a conviction of him being God. Now, when Bhagwan comes on this earth, he also takes jalebi. He also engrosses in eating tasty foods. He also indulges in, in uh, developing a desire for getting land, for getting property, for developing structures, construction, so on and so forth. But a person with understanding, a person with realization, that Bhagwan is, or this human who is really Bhagwan, is performing this activity in this way, but it is different from those of the humans that are here. For example, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has performed many, many leelas like this Manusha leelas, human like leelas, and then has also reverted back to his original form as God. So, for example, one time Bhagwan was riding a horse, and this is a story. And he, he was riding the horse, and he rode it so fast that he fell off and broke his leg, had a le fracture in his leg. Now, the doctor, which was there in the village, was called and said, "Bhagwan has, uh, or this, this." So Janan Swami has a broken leg, fractured leg. So he did all his bandages and everything and left and told Bhagwan, Sriji Maharaj, do not eat dahi, do not eat yogurt because it slows down the healing process. So do not eat dahi, please. And Bhagwan's like, okay, no problem. The next day as the doctor comes to see, Maharaj is eating dahi in front of him. As he enters. And the doctor said, I told you not to. Why are you doing this? Maharaj says, nothing is wrong with me. Let's take a look. At first, the day before, he develops, a, or he, he, he uh, you can say, pulls his human traits into his body and breaks, you can say, breaks a bone in his leg. And then the next day, he's eating day completely opposite of what the doctor said. The doctor opens, opens the bandages up and sees that nothing is broken at all. And Bhagwan says, I told you there is nothing. That he again goes back to his revert back to his human form. In this way, millions and millions and countless kinds of charitras Bhagwan has performed in order to show this. An intelligent person with understanding can see that Bhagwan's divine actions are different from the world. This is what this Vajnam says. So this is why it's difficult to maintain. But a person with understanding and a person who has the association of such ekandik, satpurushas, can understand Bhagwan's divine form. Moving on to the next Vajnam Rud, Gadara, first chapter 71. Now we would like to take a look from Nan Santo's perspective. Bhagwan Swami Narayan brought 500 nun santo with him that were the most elite that were had the most highest understanding that were anadi muktos of bhagwan swami and of his divine abode akshardham and he brought him down here and he through their you can say development development of scriptures going to vicharan helped develop the conviction of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. That's why they were here. They were kind of agents of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Now from their perspective, we would also like to see because they are examples for us. If we learn to look from their eyes, then we would be able to also develop a similar, maybe even 1% of the bhava they have for Bhagwan. Let's take a look. Vachnamra Gadara, first chapter 71. Sriji Maharaj further questioned, those abodes and the attendants residing in them are formed of Chaitanya and transcend Maya. So what flaw is there in them 
that one should not desire to see them. Also, what about God who is manifest on this earth? How do you view his attendants who are in fact mortal and the houses he lives in which are perishable? The Munis replied, we understand those houses to be like Brahmpur, meaning Bhagwan's dam, and the other abodes. And we understand those attendants to be Brahmrup, meaning Aksharup Muktos. Sri Jamar then said, Brahmpur and the attendants of God residing in Brahmpur are immortal and imperishable. Whereas the houses in attendance of this Mrutyulok, meaning this, you can say, level of uh, we live in is called Mrutyulog, human, where humans live, are perishable. How can you possibly equate to the two? Finally, Nityananda Swami requested, Maharaj, you have the answer. Maharaj, you will have to answer that question. Thereupon, Sri Maharaj explained, when, hum when God incarnates for the purpose of granting liberation to the Jeeves, he always he is always accompanied by his Akshardham, his attendants who are formed of Chaitanya and all of his divine powers, but they are not perceived by others. The main thing in this viewpoint that the Nan Santos say is that everyone in Satsang are attendants of Brahmpur, are attendants of God, are attendant of God's divine abode Akshardham. Number one. And number two. They are Chaitanya. Chaitanya meaning they are Aksharup. And wherever we are, this is the abode of God. Such kind of a perspective, if we develop that wherever, whoever one sees, may it be a devotee of God who has very little understanding, or may it be a devotee God who has a lot of understanding, may it be Santos, or may it be anyone in Satsang, they are Bhagwan's Mukto. They belong to Bhagwan's divine abode Akshardham. They are attendants, attendees of Akshardham. Such kind of a perspective has to be developed in order for one to develop Divya Bhav. And when such kind of Divya Bhav is developed, then one will never be able to develop a perspective which is negative or which is uh, perceiving any flaws in any santos or bhaktos. So this is a perspective of non santos. Now let's take a look at some benefits uh, from the Vachnamrut Loya fourth. One should realize that if even Brahma and others doubt God's yogic powers, then they cannot be said to have overcome the power of God's Maya. What is this doubt? It is the thought, why does God behave like that? On the other hand, one who understands God as flawless by believing God is capable, so whatever he does is appropriate, is said to have overcome Maya. The benefit of Divya Bhav is that one would be able to overcome Maya. Maya meaning this illusion. Illusion that this is my body, this is my possessions, and illusion that I am something. Minus and Inus. When that is overcome, then it is said that one has overcome Maya. In the same way, when one develops a Divya Bhav, for Bhagwan, understands Bhagwan to be completely flawless, understands Bhagwan's Ekantik Satpurush to be completely flawless, understands Bhagwan's Santo and Bhakto to be completely flawless, then only one overcomes Maya. One needs to understand all four elements to be completely flawless. If one only understands one of them, it is not enough. Bhagwan, Hezekantik Satpurush, Santo, and Bhakto, because we live with all of them. We need that, we need those kinds of glasses in everywhere, every direction we see. As I'm wearing these glasses, I am able to see far distances, read, board, signs, the time. But without these glasses, my perspective is completely blurry. 
If these glasses were tinted blue, then I would be able to see blue, even if it's white, even if it's black. Everywhere I see, I see blue. In the same way, when we develop and, and wear the glasses of Divya Bhav, everywhere we see, may it be Bhagwan, may it be Zekantik Satpurush, may it be Santo and Bhakto, we perceive divinity. That's the benefit of developing Divya Bhav in our satsang. Another Vachnamurta I'd like to go to, Gajra, first chapter 24, 28. If a person realizes God to be absolutely flawless, then regardless of how one swabhav, I'm sorry, this is, an, if one understands a great, uh, this is Gadara first chapter 58, there's an error. If one understands the great Purush to be absolutely free of lust, avarice, taste, egotism, and attachment, one will also become free of those evil nature, natured and become a satsang, a staunch devotee. Meaning, just as how it is very important to develop Divya Bhav in Bhagwan, it is as equal to or even more important to develop such kind of Divya Bhav for the Ekantik Sat Purush, the Great Purush. Why? Because Bhagwan is divinely present inside of his murti, but he will not tell you something or he will not do any kind of leelas because he is in that form currently. But his Ekantik Sat Purush is as missed you. He talks to you. He, he, he acknowledges you, we talk to him, we acknowledge him, everything is done. So, it is more important to develop Divya Bhav in the Ekantik Satpurush because he is present amongst us. After we develop such kind of Divya Bhav for him, then without a doubt, we would be able to develop Divya Bhav for Bhagwan. It is a step process. When we learn one plus one, then we can move on to 10 plus 10. And then eventually we can move on to multiplication, five times five, and then division, and then so on and so forth. In the same way, when we pass the first grade, we move on to the second, second grade to the third, so on and so forth. By <coughs> developing a Divya Bhav for the Ekantik Sat Purush, one will be able to develop a Divya Bhav for Bhagwan automatically. This is the benefit of this Divya Bhav. Moving on to the next slide, please. Kalyan Kanika, Kanika 5, Vat number 322. If we want to enjoy happiness in satsang, you have to avoid bodily feelings and cultivate nature to see divinity in all. If you want to enjoy the happiness of satsang. Now, satsang is full of happiness, but for those who are not ill. Ill meaning how? Ill meaning in the form of seeing flaws in others. Ill meaning seeing bad natures in others, that this person sleeps a lot, this person eats a lot, this person talks a lot, so on and so forth. If we develop such kind of perspective, <clears throat> then we will never be able to develop a Divya Bhav in Satsang and we will never be able to become happy. One thing that arises in my mind is there is people out there that make millions and billions of dollars yet they are unhappy what is the reason why are they still you can say wanting why they why do they still feel unfulfilled why is there not peace in their life because one thing <clears throat> They do not have fulfillment, they do not have understanding, they do not have satsang. In the same way, after coming into satsang, which is equivalent to millions and billions of dollars, why do we not remain or feel happiness? It's because we have ill feelings towards others. It's because we perceive negative thoughts, view people in negative ways. That's why. But after receiving a million or billion dollar check, of course we would feel happy. In the same way, after coming into satsang and developing a Divya Bhav for everyone, of course we would feel happy. So this is the formula to Divya Bhav. 
And this is what we need as satsangis to develop Divya Bhav. Now moving on in the course, there is two charitras <coughs> uh, that uh, I do not want to go over, but you will be able to read in our course packet. Uh, charitra of our divine Muktanan Swami and how he developed with Maharaj. In the second charitra of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Manusha Lila, as I explained, one of the charitras was when Bhagwan Swami Narayan broke his leg and from that, uh, you know, how he, how there is a Manusha Lila and then divine, uh, you can, divinity was portrayed. In the same way, these two charitras you'll be able to read in our course packet. So this is our week course six for our Yuva Sabha English. And the main theme was Divya Bhav. And by developing Divya Bhav for our satsang, for our, you can say, bhaktos inside of satsang, we'd be able to remain happy and we'd be able to go to Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.